You guys are way too excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are way too excited about this wow hey the uh i figured i thought about the 2020 version of streaking running through a store without a mask on right Oh no, let me check it. Okay, I, I'm gonna go to the Discord. And uh Kathy said there's a photo I gotta check out. Uh, but also I'm gonna well, I'm not gonna post it yet because it's all regulars in there now. Let's see. So what was the photo? Uh general. Uh, oh, oh, in the bathroom. <laughs> yes, that that wouldn't work in our apartment, our apartment, our house. And the bathrooms are it's all like, what is it? It's uh, marble something. I don't know. It's too porous. If I wrote on him, it would just be there forever. That's pretty funny, though, Kathy. <laughs> I could just write on my guitars. Well, let's see. We got we we've got everybody's here. It looks like David. It's not a shopping day, so you're here. Why is there a little fire over here? That's weird. Oh, I see. That's from that. Okay, that's from the Discord. I'm like, wait a minute. There's a little fire emoji on the side of my feed here. Okay. Um, Verdi's here, Dan, local, Dan's local, Kimberly, Jim, Pepper, David's here, AJ, my scribe, Bruce, my, my cigar back box manufacturer. I, I started checking out that video. Bruce sent me a video of, uh, this guy and his favorite cigar box guitars. I'm assuming they're ones he made. And, um, he probably said that, but I didn't hear it. Um, but he did, he had one that had also had, uh, temper tuning frets, which are, were, that was really cool. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'm, my ears aren't like that crazy about intonation, but I will temper tune a guitar. This is a pro tip here. Like if I'm playing up here and, and I know exclusively I'm going to be playing up there, then I will tune the guitar. So every one of these notes is perfect in tune uh, because if I tune it, so it's like standard tuning. Then when you get up here, if the intonation is not perfect, whether the strings are getting old or whether it's just the nature of guitars, um, then then uh, it starts to get a little out of tune and you have a hard time. So I will tune it, but even tuners are not quite right. I will find oftentimes that like perfect fifths are never perfect. Uh, let's see. No, that's fine. Argentina, welcome. Jamon, I'm not sure how I would say that. I hope. <laughs> oh no, buffering. No. Ah. Let me check my speed. It's Monday. That could be part of the problem. Uh, let me. Oh, I know what. Let me close Discord. Let me quit Safari right now. Uh, go doing a speed test. Well, the download speed's good. It's already over 100 megabytes, so that should be fine. Buffer sip. <laughs> it just wants a sip. Um, I'm going to put this down and take up another guitar. So now you can take, you can officially drinking game going on here. Hey, Ray, you look new. Um, checking speed is another buffer. Oh, no, really? Yeah, does it do that? It says 6.7. That should be plenty good. Um, hold on. I've got an email I got to read. 
<laughs> oh, okay, great. Answered both my questions. Okay. So I've been thinking about, um, we talked about this maybe yesterday or the day before, um, thinking about maybe starting a new playlist. I, I wouldn't want to start a new channel because although I could probably migrate a whole bunch of my, uh, not migrate, but um, have everybody subscribe to two channels. Uh, but I think I just want to do a playlist. I, I'm either going to do a new playlist where I try to kind of, kind of conceptualize and try to remember how I would teach beginners. Um, and I, again, when I was teaching beginners, I would use, I would play songs or I would teach them songs. Oh, did you confirm pants? Yeah, pants are confirmed. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry, I'm messing with you. <laughs> what, what Rick said. Because <laughs> I want you to think it's buffering, so I just. You can see me moving though, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's like when I would talk on the talk on the microphone and the sound man, I'd be like checking one. I think it's cut out, but I'm sure what <laughs> the sound man would be over there going, "What? What is the mic? You know, <laughs> your brat. I forgot. So I can do that to you guys too, <laughs> and then my viewers just go away. It's like, well. Who pays for that? I'm the one that pays the ultimate price. Um, but I did think about doing a lesson where I just like conceptualize, um, you know, some some probably what will be very short lessons, but put them, try to teach them in an order and upload them in order. I won't, I won't you know, I may do, you know, I could do three or four in one sitting and then chop it up and then release one a week or something, but basically a, a, something to work on to kind of get going. And again, dealing with mostly in my, in my head, I'm thinking older beginners. Um, and so uh, I would probably put in like one, one week would just be this exercise. And another week would might be playing, you know, uh, or maybe a C scale. Where I would write out the tab and the music at the same time, and maybe write out the tab and say, "Read the tab now." Here's the music, you know, and so that you would have, uh, you know, me. I like to I like to come at the learning experience from lots of different directions, and um, for me, it's always hands on is the way I learn things. Um, so I think that that might be kind of a cool. Yeah, I was swaying. I was swaying. I know. I was looking at. It, I was like. That's pretty good, though. I'm pretty good at old stuff. My wife can't do that. She's like, she gets the shakes. How old would be considered older? You know, what's funny, Dennis, you say that, I, I you know, I really don't know what I meant when I said that, except <laughs> when, when I was teaching, it was anyone older than me. <laughs> so when I was teaching at 25 and I had 45-year-old students, you know, they were often just getting started. They'd never played before. And so it was a different approach that I took with a 45 year old student than I would take with a 15 year old student because a 15 year old kid would literally practice all day. I could show a kid a lot on a lesson and the next week they would have it nailed and be wanting tons more. But a 45 year old student would barely get through what I gave him, if even. And so it was because he had a job he had, you know, maybe a spouse and kids and he had, you know, responsibilities and guitar was way low on the on the, uh, you know, on the totem pole on the priorities list. And so uh, when that happens, you know, it's just practice is going to take the back seat. So, hey, Ben, how's it going? Dennis is here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bob is here. Kathy, of course, my boss is here. Um, Roger, always good to see you. And Ray. 
So Ray is new. Oh, you're 65 plus. I mean, again, yeah. So, I mean, and, and I would generally, the thing, the way I would teach, which make, would make it really tough for me to do this new playlist that I'm conceptualizing <laughs> is I would tell, even before they took their first lesson, I say, would you make a list or it was part of their first lesson, they would go home and it would be part of their homework. Make a list of your favorite songs, as many as you can think of. Or if you can't think of a lot of songs, just your favorite bands or artists. And then when I saw the list and I've said Beatles and Led Zeppelin and, you know, Pink Floyd or whatever, then I would know there's, okay, oh, we could, you know, in week seven, I could teach this song. And in week 12, I could teach this song. Uh, because I, you know, I know where certain songs are easier. You know, we could learn a simple version of Let It Be, for example, on guitar. Um, but if I teach this, you know me, I'm not going to do that. So I can't teach, you know, like I normally would in the first lesson. A lot of times I would teach um, as a way of using all four fingers on the on the bottom string uh, to my beginner students, young and old. Um, and so that and also I was use that as a lesson to teach them how to read a little bit of tab. Um, I'm not opposed to tab. Don't you know, I've talked we talk about music reading all the time. I was just using finger picking patterns as an excuse to kind of introduce you to music reading. So, but what I would like to do, if I do these beginner lessons, I'll be making up songs that sound like things. Um, and then um, that work some of the same muscles. Cause again, one of the first things, and that song is deceptively easy. Um, it's actually harder than it sounds. I mean, in some ways to get the feel right is harder. Uh, but you know, if you can get someone going, they think they're playing teen spirit. Um, so that's that's kind of what, hey, is Mugu, Mugu Mugu here? Oh, yeah, Mugu Mugu's here. <laughs> okay, so you just have to mute me. Well, at least you're working. That's good, Mugu Mugu. My wife is dying. She wants to get back to work. So, uh, yeah, Eagles, Chicago, Crosby, Stills, Nash Young, all of those. And, of course, so many of the Eagle songs in the CS the Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young songs can be learned uh, just by learning a few open chords. Um, Neil Young songs, too. Uh, uh, I mean, is... Um, is Heart of Gold? That's Heart of Gold. Is that only two chords? Is that one of my two chords? Because I have two videos out, uh, five songs with two chords. And I was wrong on one of my... Uh, you know, and of course, I wasn't thinking about bridges. I was thinking about verses and choruses. Uh, Horse with no name has a different chord, kind of, on the bridge, so I was wrong on that one. But um, anyway, I'm going to take a bite out of my power bar. All right, and a sip of my coffee. Oh yeah, Walk the Line's a great song. Yeah, C A D. Um, and one G chord. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's so many great songs that are very simple. Um, but the idea of doing a progressive set of videos um, is that every video, I don't know that every video would be harder than the previous one. It'll be more like every video gives you a new piece of information that you can use on a guitar. And it would all be guitar centric. I don't think I would break off and do any theory lessons or anything like that without a guitar in my hand. I mean, I, I do think that one of the things somebody even asked, suggested here would be like doing just a, learning a C scale, ascending and descending. And that would help develop some dexterity. It would give some music knowledge. It, I would write it out in tabs so you can practice reading the tab. And you could also practice and I'd write out music so you can see what it looks like in music so it doesn't scare you. I would probably do something like that with you. And with a pick even. And then strum it and then play it descending. Like that. So um, but that would that's a five minute lesson, basically. Except maybe what I would do is have the lesson and then play along with Tom for another five minutes. I mean the advantage of taking the videos to 10 minutes is that you can add an ad in the middle, which I never do. But I think there's also you're more likely to get promoted if the video is, oh, you know, hits the 10 minute mark. If it's a two minute video, they're not going to really promote that very often. 
Um, so we were working on, oh, I, by the way, just before, I, actually, as you all were waiting for me to hit start video, I uh, listened to uh, Dust in the Wind, and it is the I Live in Indiana pattern. So it is the extra, which I knew, but I couldn't remember. Um, so it's basically. So thumb. So in the middle, four, five, uh, four strings, playing a C chord. Yeah. See. Um, so the um, so it has, ends up being. I wrote it out. That's it. Hey, is Cruzy Cruz? Are you here? I don't know if Cruz is watching. Um. I have it somewhere. I've got so many papers now, I'm losing track. It's probably in here somewhere. But um, I can, I'll show it to you. I wrote out two versions. One, I live in Indiana and I am a leprechaun. <laughs> and again, I came up with the I live in Indiana when I lived in Indiana. Hey, why don't everybody, everybody say where you're from where you, or where you are now. <laughs> oh, no, 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 is here. Everybody say where you are right now. Not specifically. Don't give me your address. <laughs> don't want to know your address. But, 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 but yeah, this is it. I'm in Granada Hills, California. Or as I like to call it, La Granada. Holland, Milford, Connecticut. My sister lives in Connecticut. Dave, Daveville on the other side of the state. Oregon, Northwest Ohio. Uh, Oklahoma City. Yay. Oh, Rick, that's where you're at. I didn't know that. Reed, you're in Minnesota. It's beautiful up there. I love Minnesota. Oregon. Oregon is gorgeous. I, I loved Portland. I did a clinic up there and just loved it. It was so green. When you live in LA, every place is green. And I knew you were in New York City, David. Uh, let's see. Grand Rapids. My, uh, my, I have cousins in Grand Rapids. My uncle lived there. My uncle has a court there. I was just there. In fact, uh, the coffee, I went to a coffee place. Is it Black Hat Coffee or Red Hat Coffee? Well, what's that place in Grand Rapids, Kurt? And Kurt, you're new. I'm not, I've not seen you before. Keith is in Essex and Suff Suffolk. My daughter was supposed to go to, um, uh, move to, uh, was it Manchester? No, it was uh, Birmingham with a mi uh, mission organization. But of course, that all got pushed back. Uh, South Florida. Orange Vale, Northern California, uh, Carolina, North Carolina. Nice hook. North Carolina is beautiful. Albany. I've been to Albany. I've been to London and in, in the UK, but nowhere else. I was teaching a lesson to someone in the UK yesterday, though. Uh, South Central Michigan. Oh, Kat, yeah, Kathy, you're, uh, yeah, I knew you were in Michigan. Okay, Northwest of Chicago. Let's see, that would put you in Wisconsin, right, AJ? Or can you be north, 45 miles northwest of Chicago and still be in Illinois? I don't know. My dad was from Illinois, Geneva, Illinois, believe it or not, in Hinsdale. Ray, you're upstate. Okay. Um, let's see. Washington. Ed, you're from Washington. Milford by the beach. I'm touching my face so everybody can take a drink. Home, home of the big tornadoes. Yeah. My daughter lives in Joplin, which is home of the biggest tornado. We talked about that before. So I think we got pretty much everybody here. <laughs> I love this channel. <laughs> well, Nana, Nana, everybody loves you. Big B Coffee. No, no, no. What was it called? Oh, it was in downtown Grand Rapids. I, my my uncle was a is a was a federal appellate court judge. So there's a. He has a library named after him there um, in the courthouse downtown. Ship. What is the name of that place? Now I got to look it up. Or, I'm sorry, but. Grand Rapids Coffee Shops. Madcap. Black Hat. I wasn't even close. Madcap. Have you heard of that place? Have you been there? It was good. It was very good. Although, you know, I'm a Starbucks. I'm not a snob. I'm the opposite of a snob. I didn't even know what the term third wave was. My kids had to explain it to me. Uh, there's a drummer out here that, that told us about that place. Uh, the, uh, um, 
Brian, uh, Brian Copps, very good drummer. We use him at church sometimes. And he's not from Grand Rapids specifically, but he knows Grand Rapids very well. Oh, you volunteer at the courthouse. Okay, so my my um, uh, my uncle was Albert J. Engel. And there's a little library, or there's a library upstairs. We, we weren't allowed to go inside, I don't think, but we, I was allowed to get my picture taken by this plaque. So my grandfather was a congressman from Michigan. Do I know a word of Dutch? Don't know a word of Dutch. Oh, sorry, Ray. I knew, I, I don't even remember. I, normally when I would go to somewhere, I would learn a little bit of the, you know, the language. And I don't remember learning any Dutch when I went to Amsterdam last year. But Okay, so the, the pattern um, that on that C chord, Okay, and again, we're I can just I can even write X three two zero one X because I'm just playing the middle four strings, and I talked about doing an creating an exercise video, uh, which I'm always looking for new exercises, and I think I think I will do that. Helen was like, "Yeah, do it, do it." So, um, but I take this pattern and then move it, you know, basically with no nothing on, you can do an E minor and start on the bottom four strings. Oops. And move it up. Basically, move it up, and then maybe go to A minor and do this. Uh, oh no! Then go E minor, C, C, and then separate everything but the thumb. So the thumb stays on the bottom string, and that way you have. Every, all your bass is covered. So if in a song that you're using that pattern, it's a very common pattern. And a song that you're using that pattern on, if you have a C chord, you want to play the middle four strings and you do it there. But what if you want the E on top? So now you got to play the thumb on the fifth string and the E up here. And that's a little bit different feeling than playing on the middle four strings. So, you know, you could play C this way with these three strings or four strings or you could play C this way. And that's what I think this exercise would actually really help. <laughs> he used to, David used to know how to swear in Turkish. <laughs> so if he did it right here, Pepper would, I mean, uh, Kathy wouldn't be able to catch it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, my Uncle Al, who was the judge, he, I loved him. He was great. He was such an awesome. Their family was so fun. We'd go over to their house. You know, my, my family was a broken home. And, you know, when my parents got divorced and everything like that, but their family, you know, the, they were married for 9,000 years. And the kids had four kids, and they all could sing show tunes. they sit at the piano, and they'd be singing all these, like, I was like, you know how that is when there's a family that's, that's not like your family and you're like, they're the best family ever. My family sucks. Um, let's see. But yeah, my, my, what was I going to, I was going to write something. Um, anyway, so that, so I, I feel like, you know, you could, you, it would be a good exercise. So I may do that. Helen said, yeah, do it. So uh, I think my exercise videos do pretty well. Um, speaking of exercise, let's go ahead and do our pinky warm up. Oh, Helen, hey. So it's one, four, three, four, two, four, three, four. Every other note is our pinky. So your pinky is going to get stronger. It's also going to start to, it's going to, you're going to teach it to remain available. Instead of tucking away, it's going to stay out here. Now your pinky is still going to tuck away. It just happens. I mean, I tuck it away all the time when I'm not using it. But when you're, when you're sending that information that you want to uh, use it, it will stay available. Okay, so here we go. First finger on the first fret. Pinky on the fourth fret. Third finger on the third fret. Fourth finger on the fourth fret. Second finger on the second fret. Fourth finger on the fourth fret. Third finger on the third fret. And then fourth finger on the... Like that. Three, four, two, four, three, four. Up a fret. One, four, two, or three. Four, two, four, three, four. It's kind of weird. One, four, three, four, two, four, three, four. One, three, four, three, 
Bye, Reed. And then one, four, three, four, four, three, four. One, four, three, four, two, four, three, four. One. No worries, Gary. Talk to you later. Three, four. One, four, three, four, two, four, three, four, one, four, three, four, two, four, three, four. You know, see, I'm putting a little vibrato on there. Right? It's kind of more of a classical, but it's like a violin vibrato. See, on a violin, when you don't have a fret, if you move your finger like this, you're actually adjusting the pitch. And it does it a little bit on guitar. This is more how we do it on guitar. The problem with that is it's only the pitch is only going up. It's above this note and higher. This is no different, but it just gives it a, a wiggle. Pretty subtle, hard to hear over the microphone, I'm sure. And you can use your fingers, you can use a pick, it doesn't really matter. This is this exercise is primarily for the left hand, for this guy here. Tom in 3D. <laughs> you guys are Japanese guitar. <laughs> oh, you want me to get the Japanese guitar out? No, no, no. It likes the Japanese guitar. So I, I took a ukulele and made it fretless. And I put a low string on the bottom. So it's not an octave up. So it's, it's my dog has fleas. Not my dog has fleas. Okay. Anyway. cool <laughs> you like that isn't that cool yeah that was just kind of my concern i had an extra ukulele so i had my guitar tech take the uh uh i can also do oud stuff on it fun with that i've already shown it to a couple composers and they're already like okay i'm gonna be writing for that i'm like cool that's why i did it like i said my best instrument is my imagination um and trying to envision uh different um you know different instruments that maybe don't exist currently i even like with a with i can't do it right now because i don't have my rig set up but um uh, with that, who was it? Uh, oh, David, you were the one that was interested in the um, Dan Electro, so the U2 guitar. Um, you know, uh, Kimberly, I really don't have a preference for ukulele strings. Um, the strings that I got on that one, I actually only put on one of the strings because I only needed the bottom one. I didn't know they were all going to be red. I just ordered them because they were, I think I ordered them on Amazon. They just had like five star review and everybody liked them. And they were a little bit on the expensive side, but I only needed the bottom string because the nylon strings, they just last forever. You don't need to ever change them. So, okay, Kurt, we'll have fun at, is it Madcap Coffee? I already forgot the name of it. What did I say it was? Not Matt, not Matt. Ah, oh, shoot. Anyway, yeah, it is Madcap Coffee, I think. I don't know. Anyway, have fun, Kurt. Um, <laughs> no worries, no, no, no. Uh, let's see. Kimberly had a question. Yeah, I got that. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Bob. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah. Am I selling the ukulele? No. Yeah, that's a Kyoto ukulele, a Kodo. Yeah, I, I call it, it's kind of a pseudo Kodo. In fact, one of the composers I work for, his mom is Japanese, and he asked if I played Kodo, and he actually has his mom's Kodo. 
Uh, but those things are giant, and it, his mom's Kodo is like it needs major repair. He, he asked me if I knew anyone that fixed Kodos in L.A., and I'm like, no, and not that I know of. Although when I was at my guitar tech, I saw he had an Oud that he was working on, so maybe maybe my guitar guy does. I can ask him. Um, yeah, and Bob is doing Kathy's. Uh, so I'm going to fire Kathy now. I'm going to take her off as – no, just – that would be mean. Okay, so back to the uh, – oh, I, hey, did everybody sipped, right, when I – you know, Kathy caught that. So when I now I'm switching guitars again, so you get to take another sip. So the drinking game is if I touch my face uh, like that, take a sip. If Tom refers to himself in the third person, <laughs> where's Verdi? Verdi's going to be on the floor. Um, if I say I had a band in high school called, if I mentioned that I did all the guitars for Apex Legends, which I did. Uh, <laughs> If I, I do have the dub. Yes. Oh, it's in the, I guess I packed it away. Yeah. No, I don't get rid of anything. I don't get rid of any guitars anymore. I used to back when I couldn't afford, if I needed another a guitar and I had one that I didn't need, I didn't think I needed. I, I've gotten rid of so many guitars. I wish I still had that. Now I'm like, I can afford not to. So there's Verdi. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. Intonation does go out eventually. Um, but it's usually the bottom four string or three strings on a classical guitar that go bad. I usually, when I change strings, I don't change the top ones unless their intonation is bad. Yeah, so if the intonation goes bad, then I will replace them. And I'm not even sure why that happens because it's like nothing's changed. But I guess they do stretch out or get thinner eventually and they're just not as as good as they were, so. You have four ukuleles? I have six. I mean, I don't know if I can call that a ukulele anymore, but I didn't mean to have six, but I have a soprano, uh, a, a tenor, a baritone, a that ukulele, uh, I think, right? Don't I have six? What's the other one? Well, I have the banjo uke, the, the one with the banjo body, but it's a ukulele. Uh, which I kind of use. It's kind of cool. It's got a weird sound. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. Oh my goodness. Allergies. Question from Dennis. We're just doing questions today. So if you're going to get more guitars, where would you hang them? If your studio's full, my studio, no, I have to put hangers over there. I don't have any hangers right there. Um, and I have another room <laughs> that's full of amps. Uh, and guitars too. So, and I have three closets full of guitars. <laughs> so, so, and actually not full. I got two closets full of guitars and a third closet that's got about one quarter full of guitars. And we're building a closet, so that one's not built yet. So, when it's done, it'll it'll have more guitars in it. Um, I, yeah, I mean, right now I'm not really buying a whole lot. Although I've got a lot of uh, after the the lockdown is done, I'll probably try to spend some money to help out some small businesses. I just ordered a um, a uh, Bode Psaltery um, on. Oh, let me do the Discord invite. Okay, I just I just uh, uh, bought a Bode, Bode Psaltery from this guy, this old guy in Nashville, Indiana, that makes them. Um, and then I also ordered a chromatic dulcimer because I have, and I I'll pull out the dulcimer tomorrow if I remember. Well, tomorrow I may not be here. We'll see. Um, what I, what I may do is I may do a marker video, a like 10, five minute, like go live for five minutes just to say, I'm not going to be going live <laughs> tomorrow. Just so I do day 52, 42 or whatever. Today's day 41. So Kimberly, ukulele is so fun to play. Yes, it is so fun to play. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And in fact, this pattern is perfect for ukulele because, because it's a four string pattern. And you got four strings. Um, so if I were to play that on the ukulele, oh, great, it's going to get to sit. So if I change guitars, that's another reason to take a drink. So um, I'm going to have to play a little D chord, but it's a little out of tune because it's fretless, but. I love this thing. Um, but yeah, this, the, the, this, the dust in the wind pattern, which is right here in music form. Okay. And the cool thing is, like I said, 
this these are the only four notes in the chord. You, this looks crazy complicated, but in truth, it's only these four notes, which is the middle four strings on a C chord. There's the fifth string. There's the fourth string. There's the open G string. That's where that is. And here's the first fret, second finger. Now, you don't get any of that information from here. You just have to memorize it. But once you see that, you can see, oh, here's the, there's the fifth string. There's the fifth string. There's the fifth string. There's the fifth string. There's the fourth string. There's the fourth string. Fourth, fourth. So you can see, oh, wait. That's pretty simple. And like I said, when I see a, a pattern like this on a piece of music, I'll take all those notes and kind of shove them over to one side and see, oh, they're all the same note. And I realize, okay, so all I have to do is hold down a C chord for this phrase. Um, of course, now the, now here, the, these are the two different phrases. This is the, I am a leprechaun, and I, this is the, I live in Indiana. The only difference is, this is one, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four, and. So this is... I am a leprechaun. I live in Indiana. Okay. So this one has a pause on one and four. This one only has a pause on one. And when I say pause, I mean, it's a quarter note. And then everything after that's an eighth note. So if we were to tap it, let's tap. In fact, let's do the second one. The I live in Indiana. You can tap it on your lap. Pants confirmed. Um, so it's, I, I uh, see. I live in Indiana. I, one two and three and four and one, two and three and four and. And it's important to loop those. So you can see it's not one, two and three and four and, one, two and three and four and. That would be five, four. <laughs> it's like, I can, oh, I can, I can play in seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. No, you gotta, you, the whole point of, of like tapping out the rhythm is to um, get it to so that you can connect the phrase and keep doing it over and over again. So one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and you see the pause. I live in Indiana. Bum, 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 And that's the pattern from Dust in the Wind. Okay, so that's the rhythm. And here's the pattern. C chord. We're going to play thumb and second finger, thumb on the fifth string, and second finger on the second string. And I'll set up my little light here. I think that'll help until it shoves my key keyboard under the floor. Um, so thumb and second finger, pinch the fifth string, and there's our one. And then we're going to go thumb on the fourth string, answer that with the first finger on the third string, and back to the thumb on the fifth string, and then the second string finger, second string, and then thumb on the fourth, and then first finger on the third string. Okay, now I'm going to go really, really slow. We're going to do, we're going to break this into chunks, which I always like to do. So when you have a problem with something and you can't do it, break it down into very, very small bite-sized pieces, just like you would a giant steak. Okay. So here we go. This is a giant steak. <laughs> Makes no sense. Oh no, I'm buffering. You guys aren't falling for it, are you? All right. So just do the pinch. One two, three, four, again, one, two, three, four, two, three, four, <laughs> I'm a tease, yeah, two, three, four, okay, now let's try the thumb, and then move the thumb down, so it's be one, two, all right, that's the next one, thumb, and, so the pinch, thumb and second finger, and then the thumb moves down to the fourth string, and that'd be B2. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Not falling for it. Did you fall for it before, Kathy? <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I need to bring out the Epiphone. Yeah, I would fail a Romberg test in your office. Yeah, because you can see me moving. I'm, not, I'm assuming that's what the Romberg test is. Okay, now let's do. Let's add the and of two on here. So we have thumb, the pinch, then the thumb on the fourth string, and then we answer that with the the G string with your first finger. Okay, 
You can even break, just practice that if you want. So we're gonna go thumb and second finger, thumb first. And I'll take it slow. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three. Did I, I fooled you the first time, that's the last time. Three, four. One, two, and three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Two, and three, four. Okay. Now we're going to add the thumb again to the bottom. So we're going to go thumb, four, three, and then thumb. If you want to practice that part there, fourth string, third string with the first finger, and then fifth string. Get a little closer. That's even better, huh? Okay, so it's this pinch. Thumb. So it's one, two, and three. So we're halfway. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know a lot about cricket. Oops. Hey, Peter. I'm just breaking down the, the, the dust in the wind pattern very simply. Okay, so now we're going to go. See, remember before we pinched the thumb and third finger, or thumb and second finger? We did that. Now we're going to separate those two. So we're going to go pinch, thumb, first, thumb, third, or thumb, second, sorry. And then we're going to follow it up with that. Okay, do you see that? So we do this two times in the pattern. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two and three and four and one okay so we have one so now we're just doing the pinch thumb sec uh first finger thumb second finger okay so it's pin two and three and four one two and three and four I don't know if this is helping you if it's a good way to teach this like i said it's very difficult to teach this okay now um oh i'm sorry i'm at, I, I i was adding beat four. One, two, and three three and one two and three and four one two and three and four one two and three and four. Okay, now we'll finish up. Now the other pattern, the I am a leprechaun pattern would just go down and this would be beat four and that would be it. So you'd have one, two and three and four. Okay, and slowly that's the on beat one, the pinch, the fifth string and the second string and answer that with the fourth string, third string with your first finger, thumb, second finger, thumb on the fourth string like that now that would take us to four one two and three and four one two and three and four two and three and four one two and three and four two and three and four okay so we have, so then I, I can re finish it off by hitting that first, that index finger again on, B, on the and of four. So it'd be this, one, two, and three, and four, and. And again, take it slow, get it down, but don't pause at the end. Don't do the. 
1, 2, and 3, and 4, and 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and so you could make an exercise out of this playing the fourth string, first finger, okay? You just practice that because that's four and, and then here's one. So you can practice the just the four and one of the phrase to help you not to help you not stop in the middle of the phrase. Squirrel, I'm getting bored. I'm boring myself. It's hard to go really slow. It's that's one of the tough things to do when you're learning something. I'm really, really bad at it. So I'm not trying to say I'm not telling you to do something that I, you know, uh, that I don't. Str I struggle with it. So uh, you, you should know. Oh man, it's almost time to get a new chair. This chair's I can tell it's about ready to crud out on me. All right, so let's see. So that's kind of what, here's that dust in the wind. Um, I did not write it out in tab. Um, I could, if you, I can show you what it might look like in tab. Oh, you know what? Did I post the Discord? I did not. And you know what's cool is I noticed everybody was had their guitar in their hand because the, the live chat slowed down. Question, Ray Timmermans is asking, I got a new Yamaha from Sweetwater. Box says I shouldn't open right away to let it get used to the temp inside. Should I get a case for it? That's weird. I've never heard that before. <laughs> if I got something from Sweetwater, I just open it up. I, I, I'm opening it up just because of the candy they put in the box. <laughs> uh, let's see. Get me that bit bit of honey. <laughs> I want to lose a. I want to lose a filling. I've not heard that. Well, where do you live, Ray? I, you probably said, but I forget. Yeah, going slow is harder almost. And something, what, you know, it's funny. Once you can play something pretty fast and try to slow it down, it's almost like, wait a minute, you know, because you're on autopilot. And I, yeah, I, I'm assuming, Bob, that it's an acoustic guitar that Ray's talking about. Because uh, an electric guitar, solid body electric guitar, really, you don't have to worry about it. Um, I'll tell you, though, here's what I do do. This is a, <laughs> I do do. I said do do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, uh, Kathy, you better give me a timeout. I said do do. Um, and Chandler Bing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Chanandler Bing. Chanandler Bong. Miss Chanandler Bong. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, upstate New York. Nah, Ray, you're fine for crying out loud. I mean, I, if you lived in like Phoenix or something, maybe, but here, I'll tell you what, this is another one of those pro tips. I gave you a pro tip earlier. Here's another pro tip. When I get to a session, um, I first thing I do is I put my acoustic guitars in the room that I'm going to be playing in, and I open the cases so that the air in the room, and usually at the nice studios, they're perfectly humid, humidified. I mean, they're just like really nice, and so they're better than my closet or anything like that. So as soon as I get in the room, I open up all the acoustic cases and let them breathe. And that way, when I pick up the one acoustic guitar or the other, it's already kind of used to the the environment, used to the temperature, used to the humidity, all of that stuff. Especially if I've driven and it's a hot car. My car, is, it's pretty cool. My car trunk stays really cool if I have the AC on, which I don't know how that works. Um, but I have a Volvo. And um, so it, it works, you know, it stays pretty cool in the, in the trunk when I'm traveling. I don't, I only buy cars with big trunks. So, um, so hopefully that answers your question. Oh, it's on every shipping box. I never notice. I don't. I don't read the box. <laughs> I don't even read the instructions. Um, let's see. Uh, bad language sip. <laughs> yeah, bad language sip. <laughs> I'm go to the corner. All right. Can I take a guitar with me to the corner? Okay. Tom's in the corner now.
Someday I'm going to leave the camera on and forget that you're here. Okay. So I went to the corner because my boss told me to go in the corner. Uh, okay. So apparently that's on every shipping cop box. I've never noticed that. I'll have to, I don't really order a lot of acoustic instruments though. Although I do remember when I got the FedEx box with the Taylor, I got, where is it? Oh, I don't, I packed it away. My 814 Taylor <laughs> that Bob Taylor sent me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I hate guys like me. I hated guys like me that got free gear. I never get free gear. That was one of the few times where I actually got a piece of gear for free. Um, and uh, it was because I was teaching clinics for them. So they, they want, didn't want me showing up with my Gibson Dove. <laughs> so I guess I kind of like freaked them out. Oh, yeah, I got a Gibson Dove. Like, no, nope, you can't bring that. So, um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Which wall mount do you use for those guitars in the back? Oh, the, uh, that's a great question. I use and I love these. And I don't know if I can find them on Amazon. Let me try. Uh, just so if you buy them. Uh, oh, wait a minute. They may be on my... Let me check and see if I have them on my list, but they're called off the wall and I like them because they're, they're actually very light. They're aluminum. Um, I have one. Hold, hold on a second. I hate to do this. I hate to walk out of here. But they're very, um, so this can come out, out like, let's see, where is it? There it is. So you can see it's in it. You can barely, you can see it says off the wall. Okay. It's super light. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's, that's aluminum. Um, super light though. And uh, it has three screws and it comes with, of course, the, the stucco things, but I didn't use them. They're the big white plastic ones. I prefer to use the smaller ones, uh, so they, they don't dig out as much of the, uh, plaster. Um, and these are about 20 bucks a pop now, and they come in at least two different styles. Um, and I forget which one this is. See, I got to get that back. There we go. So it has a little thing on it, lip on it there, and it goes in the, like that. So it lines up and then you just turn it and there you got a, a hanger. And, um, this, a very good pad on it. Um, Let's see, I think this is an older one, if I'm not mistaken, because it's a rubber. I think the other ones are more felt now or something. Uh, but I really, really like these. I like, I've had the cheaper ones and I see them pulling away from the wall and these never have. Uh, so so I really recommend them, but they're about 20 bucks a pop. Um, I do believe they're made in, the, made in America. Yep, made in the USA, which is always a good thing. Um, and let me see if they are in the list of gear stuff um let's see view on youtube bum, bum, bum. all right let's see yeah oh, okay so here's the standard and here's the now maybe it's discontinued nope there it is awesome okay Oh, currently unavailable. Currently unavailable. Dang it. Okay. So I think that you, does Sweetwater have them? Sweetwater may have them, but I really, really like them. That was a question quite a while ago. Now it's buried. Uh, okay. Oh. Uh, Dennis, you're asking, do you reckon it would be better to start on electric or acoustic as a beginner, or do you think it makes no difference? It, it, I, it, yeah, I think, I think that's a great, um, it's a great question. Um, I think that that would be, if you're really into artists that play acoustic, uh, even though electric's a little bit easier to play, I think to start on, cause you can have thinner strings and you can set the action really low. Um, in my opinion, there's a lot more, you know, a lot more nuance on electric because you know you got amps different amps and different pedals and things like that and acoustic is just going to sound like what it is um and so you don't have to learn any of that stuff if you go right to acoustic and uh you don't have to worry about feedback if your amps too loud or whatever so acoustic it, so if you're really into acoustic artists then sure if you're really into like say you know pink floyd and cream and uh you know zeppelin then obviously electric so i think that it's probably better to choose an instrument based on what style of music 
uh, you really that really resonates with you. And if it's a if it's a 50 50 split, then maybe start with acoustic because it's a little harder to play. Um, so that might be tempting to discourage you, but then you're also you're getting your hands stronger sooner. And then when you go to electric, you're like, oh, this is easy. I mean, I pick up if I play this, you know, acoustic. Well, this one's easy to play. But if I pick up like one of my acoustics and it's hard to play, and then I go and pick up that SG up there, I'm like, oh, this is like butter. Okay, so that that's a that's a uh, that's what I think. So uh, let's see. Um, Oklahoma is a strange place for humidity. Yeah, you're right. It can be very humid there. Like Houston is crazy humid. I've never been in such a humid city as Houston. Um, I've been to Miami and it's uh, Houston's worse. Um, oh, the model number of the ultimate stands. I do not. Um, but the ultimate stand I have this, this is probably my newest one. It's got this little flip thing that you can flip over and put in front of the guitar if you really want to keep it safe. Uh, but because it's leaning back, I don't really ever feel like it's not safe. This kind of can go fold down so that you can you can uh, fold it out, you know, get rid of, uh, you know, for packing it in the trunk and everything. This is uh, this is like felt or something. It's very soft. Um, it's not rubbery, which rubbery could get kind of sticky over time. So this can get probably nasty over time too. Uh, let's see if there's a model number on here. It just says ultimate support. Um, and then yeah, the, the this thing adjusts. I've never had one of these break. Um, that's why I buy them. And I also buy them. I, I don't get the ones with the little lips on them because I don't want the guitar sitting in there because then you run the risk of not having it sit solid enough up here and it could fall forward. The beauty of this, I feel like, and the great thing about these two is that this is a wide neck. It's a classical neck. It fits in there fine. And you just adjust the height so the bottom is touching. Um, so I think I do have a, let's see, I do have that one, Ultimate Support Guitar Stand. Um, yep, this is that one. So here's the link for that. If you want, just look at, you don't have to buy it from this. It, you know, if you buy anything from any of my Amazon links, or like if you go to one of my links and then continue shopping, you know, they give me like, you know, one to 5% of your total bill, which is crazy. But you know, it doesn't generate a lot of revenue, but every little bit helps. But here's the, uh, that's it. Okay. So there's that. Um, footrest too. Yeah, I just bought this. This was a, I really like this one, actually. It's a Tetra, Tetra Tech, Trek Technica. Um, but the thing I liked about this was it's giant, like you, you can really go high on it. Now that the higher you go, obviously the more unstable you are. Most foot stands, yeah, there you can see it now. Most foot stands would have maybe four notches. This one has six. So you have even more control over how high it goes. And like I said, I, my friend Luis, I was like, he, I said, hey, can you think I could get James Taylor to make me? Because he likes making wood stuff in his wood shop. He's always fixing things, apparently. Fixing things on the tour buses and stuff like that. So let me, let me give you the um, footrest thing. That one I actually need to add to my, let me add that to the, It was something like this. Let's see. On it. Yeah, this was it. And they're all the same. They're all the same manufacturer. The only thing that's different is the logo. So here's that. Copy. Copy link. And I need to add this to. Um, here's that link. Okay. What are we sipping for? No, no, no. How do you say sip in Japanese? <laughs> uh, a friend of mine wrote the song, Hey, Nana. In fact, he and I wrote Home to Mama together. That was That's who wrote Home to Mama, was him and Sam Hook and I. Uh, mine are called Uhura, and I bought them from Amazon and love them. Oh, the footrest. It's Oh, uh, yeah, I think it's exactly the same one. I think I just saw that here. No, that's Gleam. Okay. Donner. Yeah, these are all identical. They just have different names on them. It's funny. It's the same. It's all the same factory. I'm sure of it. Um, newer guitar. Yeah, they're all, it's hilarious. Some of them are. Um, so let's see. And so what I should do is, oh, this is, okay. So what I should do is go to my 
live here and then edit this and add. Oh, I haven't done that yet. Okay. That's yesterday's. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, add it here. I can add it here. Under, I'll add it under support. Yeah. Put rest. So I'll, I'll try to remember to put that in subsequent video. So it's there. I'm always trying to update that. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Hack and sack. And this sip of Tom has to walk out of the room. Okay. Where's Gary? Gary's not here now. He left. That may have to, Kathy, remember that one. If I leave the room, <laughs> what if I leave the room and don't come back? What is that? Because <laughs> you guys, if you guys keep ticking me off, that'd be more common. Okay. David's question above. Okay. Uh, Footrest 2. I got that. Let's see. I'm trying to catch up. You changed guitars when you went out of the corner. Too. Oh, I did, didn't I? Uh, hangers clamped down on the head. Uh, yeah, you can, yeah. Um, and these don't do that. Like some of them will clamp on it. And those are fine too. The, the weight, the gravity thing where it closes when you put set it down there. I, you know, I don't mind those either. The ones I don't like are the ones that are like, there's 10 of them in a row or something. They're all connected. I, you know, if it comes down, they all come down. That's just to me because keep in mind, I live in earthquake country. So, um, let's see which, okay. Thanks hook. David's question above. I got that one. I think, right. <laughs> a sip for Tom's time out. No, <laughs> but Kathy, you got the reference from, from friends. Kathy knew what I was talking. I love that scene where he's getting the inter where Chandler's interviewing for a job. Okay. Let's see. AJ is asking, what would you say to a newbie who has an acoustic 12 string and an electric? Other than that, too much time on sense. Okay. One thing you can do, it's I did it with my 12 string, because remember, I got a really cheap K12 string with my second guitar, and it almost made me quit guitar. And the reason I got it was because I um Ooh, I should try to find one. It would be kind of fun to find one just to have because I'm sure they're not expensive. I'm sure I sold it for 40 bucks or something like that. Um, but I got it because I was really into John Denver and John Denver played a 12 string. And I think John Denver played either a Guild or a Martin. Um, take a sip, everyone. And so I got a 12 string and it just, it was such a bad cheap one that the action was awful. Um, the intonation wasn't great. It had a had a bridge on it. You could adjust the height with a screwdriver. Um, and uh, dang it, touched my face again. So, um, but that one, so that one was um, uh, really a garbage. And what I did was I took off the high strings and just made it into a six string acoustic. So I guess you could say that technically that was my first six string acoustic. But then the neck is wider, so it feels like a almost like a classical guitar. It feels like my uh, I should get out my uh, Gibson folk singer. I never have that one out. Um, and so, so you could, if you want, you could take off half the strings. That's kind of what I'm thinking. If you want to have a six string acoustic, you could take off half the strings and just have a six string acoustic. Now the neck might not like that because it's the neck was built for twelve strings, but I don't think six, having less pressure is going to do too much issue with the neck. But I mean, at that point, you want probably your next purchase will be a um, uh, would be a, a, a an acoustic twelve string. So now you're saying what to practice a newbie twelve string. Who plays tw twelve string? Like, what are some good twelve string songs? Um, well, uh, you know, don't forget that um, uh, Hotel California is on 12 string, but it's capoed at the seventh fret. So it's not as hard as it sounds. Um, so basically with, with uh, um, when you play Hotel California, it's like. Uh, no. I can't remember. Hey, 
C shapes. G A minor B7. So that one, in, in the, you know, you got several things working to your advantage on that. You're capable of the twelfth fret, so the or the seventh fret. So you're putting the strings at fret level, um, and that lowers, makes it a little easier to play. And the frets are uh, the frets are smaller, so you don't have to spread as much to play the the chord. So uh, that would be a good song to learn if you don't know it. And then if you want, you can try to learn the solos, which are always fun. Uh, and on electric guitar, so then you have both. You have the the acoustic part and you learn the solo part the solos are really fun and not not ridiculously hard solos it's just two guitar players um and they make a lot of sense the beauty of the guitar solos on on uh hotel california is they really follow those chords really well because the chords are kind of weird you know it's like not your normal chord it's a brilliant chord progression but it's not diatonic it changes keys and stuff so i think hotel california is a great song to learn on 12 string and to learn to start to learn some of the soloing aspects of it um, it's very in the pocket, as we would say. Okay. Uh, um, let's see. My daughter lives in Houston. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, it's brutal. Houston's crazy. Okay. That's where did you find? Oh, the $24 one. Is it 24 bucks? Or usually I see them for 19. I forget where. I think I have to buy them from some small guitar store that carries them, not online. I don't think I can find, or maybe eBay. I can find them on eBay, but I, they're not on Amazon for some reason. You think everything's on Amazon, but it's not. Um, yes, ultimate, awesome. The ultimate support, ultimate Genesis series guitar stand. Yeah, they're really good and super nice people too. Every year at the NAM show, I go say hi to them. Um, has anybody here been to the NAM show? I mean, who knows if we're going to do it next year? I, I just heard that Disneyland may not reopen till next year. That's crazy. I don't think they can operate on at a profit if they're only half full. So they really want to get past the stage of, you know, where they where potentially we have a vaccine. I think we'll probably get past the stage where re people realize it's not as dangerous as they thought it was. Or we're getting more and more uh, cures, or not cures, but treatments that work really well. A lot of people have already had it that don't even know they had it. That's kind of thing, too. So um, let's see. Yes, electrics can be more expensive. You have to buy more. Yeah, the East, and, and David, you're. I'm sorry, I'm way behind on these. Also, careful about padding material. Some padding, low cost stands will damage the finish on the high end guitar. Yeah, you know, and I've always said, Bruce, you know, I don't really care. I mean, it, I mean, I, I wouldn't buy something that intentionally had garbage padding or whatever. But you're right. That's I think why so many so many companies are are you know the the higher end ones uh, use better materials. Um, and I think, like I said, I think they changed uh, off the wall, changed from this kind of rubber stuff, which can get a little or no, the, the shiny rubber to this more matte rubber. The, the shiny one got stickier. Um, and it, again, it depends on your uh, climate, your humidity. Uh, you know, I know that if you have it, if you had a guitar stand in the kitchen and it had the shiny rubber, you know, the oils in the kitchen from cooking would make it very sticky. So um, let's see. I mean, uh, uh, let's see the, oh, yeah. Get. Yeah, you can always improve the sound of your guitar by putting a nice uh, bone nut on there. I have, uh, uh, you, know, tu you know, not tusk, obviously, not real tusk, but the, you spelled it with a Q, so it's a fake stuff. Um, let's see. Boy, am I way behind? Let me see. I got, oh, okay. Question from Ben above. Let me see. Okay, Ben. Tom, I bought a traveling three-quarter size. Uh, it's a Yamaha APX-T2. What are the disadvantages of it? Well, let me look that up real quick. Okay, Ben, because there, there's literally no disadvantage if the fretboard is the same size. But if the fretboard's smaller, then the some of the technique and stuff that you're learning from it, if it's for writing, not a big deal. Um, let me see. Where can I find one? Sweetwater. Okay. Uh, so the oh no, that's not it. Okay, so here it is at Musician's Friend. Um, what's a standard? See, now I got to know what a standard width for, for, okay. So, you know, the, it looks like a big fretboard. Um, it looks like a normal fretboard to me. Let's see, does it say, have a specs, write a review, questions, answers. Um, it's got a pretty good reviews at, at guitar. Uh, at where am I? Musician's friend. Uh, oh, here we go. Spec. Nut with a, one and 11 sixteenths. 
Okay, 43 millimeters. Okay, let me look up a standard. Like here's a, no, that's a mini. Let me look up a standard. One in 11 16. So let me look up like a Martin. Uh, HD 28. There we go. So it was 43 millimeters or one in 11 16. And it's, I'm being yelled at right now. Nut width one. Okay, one and three quarters. So 11 16. Boy, that's really close. So one and three quarters, uh, nut width uh, 11 16. So one and 11 16. So it'd be 12 16 would be three quarters. So it's, I think you're fine. The, my concern on the three quarter size guitars is that your hand's going to be learning and memorizing things at a certain um, spacing. And then when, and then when you go to a regular guitar, it's going to be like, yeah, everything, it's, everything feels so big. Um, the only thing is the body sound. It's not going to be as good. you not for acoustically, but it's for traveling. And you're saying traveling three quarter size. If you're traveling, it's perfect. The other thing is, um, uh, I um, uh, uh, would actually like to have a small travel guitar. I don't have one um, because um, I think that in some ways, I think for pop records, I think a small sounding guitar would be nice. Um, so I'm actually looking for something like that. I'm also looking for a, a like a, a used plug-in nylon guitar. So like one of these with a pickup in it that I'm going to have the frets taken out and filled. So you can see where they, not only did they take the frets out, but they filled it in so the lines are still there. Okay. Uh, so I can, I can see the notes. Yeah. So I. It's my Kodo slash Oud, mini Oud ukulele. An oodalele. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Okay, I'm sorry. The coffee log. <laughs> You're getting coffee log. Okay, got the question there. Um, oh yeah, a Rickenbacker frying pan. Bonnie, what are you talking about? That's crazy. That's the first electric guitar, isn't it? And that was actually a frying pan. Was originally. Do they do they even market or sell those uh, anymore? Rickenbacker frying pan. So what she's talking about, I think, is a um, uh, let's see. Reverb. Yeah, how much are they selling these for? I mean, I don't know. That, are they ridiculous? Yeah, $5,000. But it's a lap guitar, right? It's not... Well, it does have frets on it. No, it's the action's too... It's crazy. It's all metal. I would just, I would just think I would get electrocuted. <laughs> Go play it by the pool, play in the bathtub. <laughs> so, uh, oh, Bowie played 12 string on most of his, you know what? You're right. 12, Bowie songs are great songs. And also uh, give a little bit uh, uh, super tramp. That's a great acoustic 12 string song. I'm sure there's someone out there with a list, a giant list of 12 string songs. Um, list of 12 string songs. Of course I'm, I'm probably going to get electric ones in here too, but that doesn't mean you can. 30 best guitar world. 30 best. Here's a list. 30 best acoustic. And of course, they start out with, I mean, Summer to Heaven is technically 12 string, isn't it? Some of it is. Uh, Pantera, America, Horse of No Name, Ocean, John, uh, John Butler. I didn't realize that. Okay. Oh, he is playing it on 12 string. That's right. America, Bob Dylan, Hurricane. Gordon Lightfoot, Early Morning Rain. So here's here's that article. If you guys want to bookmark that, just for, to have it's kind of a good. I need to probably do that. Okay, uh, okay. From net, uh, sorry, I'm way down here. Hey Tom, I'm 26 years old. Too old to start. Heck no, <laughs> not at all. No, ma'am. Just start playing. And my my the best advice I can give you too for that is, once we're done with the whole lockdown and the whole social distancing, well, you can still be six feet apart. But jam with others. Find other guitar players to play with. You will get better so fast. And then try to bring something to the game. You know, in other words, learn something new before you get there. I, I remember hearing stories about, you know, John and Paul. They would travel across town just because they heard a kid knew a guitar chord they didn't know. They would get on the bus and just to, just to learn that new chord that they might be able to put in a song. That's why I think it's Beatles songs have such 
interesting harmonies because they were they really valued that they they value, well here's a good chord i always call it like um i had a song that i wrote that i really you know liked it with that uh this artist recorded hasn't been released yet but um um And that that C seven chord is the money chord. It's the chord that is like that, like right there. That's like, oh man, that's money. And uh, so you know, I think the Beatles were really good at finding that chord that's just going to surprise the listener. And then that's like, oh, it's beautiful. And then that it, it it intrigues and pulls the listener in. So no, but anyway, twenty six is not too old. Uh, I've, I've taught students that started at 60. I had a 70 year old student for the first time and you just take it slow, take it easy, have fun. If you have, now you have a lot of time, what, what else are you going to do? Um, so I think hopefully that helps. Oh, you already got the whole spring, whole 12 spring part from hotel California. I should just jump down here. Uh, so David, you want to go to Nam? Okay. Well, let's see. Keep in touch. We'll keep in touch and we'll see if, um, they have Nam next year. <laughs> it's January. I mean, I because I can I can get a couple passes. Uh, so, oh, I hope I answered Nahum Nahum's question before he logged out. <laughs> Did he take off? Everybody's super nice here, and they'll answer your question because I don't get to it. Okay, so we got. Okay, I'm scrolling down, and I'm seeing we got questions. Okay, uh, David, question. New SIP rule. If Tom goes more than five minutes behind in comments, <laughs> Bob, you would be constantly. I don't know how you quantify that. Uh, sorry. Okay. Let's see. Link for older beginners video again. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. That's the, that's my, if you just go to my YouTube channel and sort by uh, most watched videos. Um, that's I, let's see how many, let's see. I'm going to sort by views. 2 million and 75,000 views on this thing. Get shareable link. Okay. So David, here's that link. All right. So let's see. I don't know if that was David's question. Bruce Ringrose in Jamaica. Oh, oh wait. Okay. You want, okay. Okay. I got now. Okay. So, yeah. So David, keep in touch. Um, I can get some badges every, you know, I can, I just, it's just a matter of getting them in early. I have to do it in November. Everybody contacts me the week before and like, Hey, can you get me in? I'm like, no, <laughs> you had to contact me two months ago and I can only get so many people in. Uh, hey, Pepe, ciao. I moved too fast. Buffer. Yeah. Buffy. Oh, is it buffing? The, dang it. I didn't see that. Audio lag now. Not anymore. Okay. Yeah, Bonnie Lee, it's a lap steel. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. It does have, looks like it has frets on it, but it looks like scalloped frets. Scalloped is when they carve out in between the frets. Uh, Ingvi Malmsteen ha has his Strat scalloped at the top. So he can do these bends, like really serious bends. The birds use the 12-string a lot. Yes, that's right, Ty. Um, it's, am I funny out of sync? Can I do, I, I can't. I don't know how to do out of sync. Um, I know how to. You can do that. Okay, let's see. Yeah, Gordon Lightfoot used a lot, uh, 12 string a lot. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Jimmy Buffett uh, on, a 12, on 12 string. Okay, well, and I, and I posted that list so you guys can, can check out that list. Um, oh, are you feeling better today, Beppe? I mean, everybody's asking, right? Everybody's keeping tabs on Beppe. Hey, Ray. Yeah, everybody takes care of everybody here. Text lag now. Well, my, I always have text lag. <laughs> so, see, I'm just now getting Kathy's ha. All right. So, Kathy, text me one, 
two, three, now. And I'll tell you when I get it. And that's how long the lag is on the text. Yeah, John Denver always played 12 string. Uh, that's why I got my first 12 string. I should look one up. Like I said, the K-12 string. See, I still haven't seen Kathy text unless she's just ignoring me. So it's pretty long lag from... I can tell when I do something funny and it's like, or the sip thing, when I do, when I touch my face, it's like a minute before the sips start showing up. Yeah. John Denver, it was great. When I was a kid, people thought I looked like him because I had round glasses. And, I don't know, high cheekbones. Yeah. Just got your text now, Kathy. So that was probably 30 or 40 seconds at least. So it's really weird. I'm not sure how, you know, how all that works. So tomorrow, yeah. Hey, John P. Um, yeah. I mean, guitar, obviously over ukulele, but ukulele is a great thing for a little kid to start on because the chord shapes, you're learning the top four strings of a guitar. The other thing, if you didn't know this, the a mandolin is the bottom four strings of the guitar upside down. So if you envision the like a G chord like this and you envision, so here's a G chord on the guitar, on the guitar, two, 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 two. Right, I'm playing it like that. Three, three fingers. Oops, got to hit return. <laughs> okay, so that's a G chord on guitar. On mandolin, it's that. So it's zero zero two three. That's mandolin G chord, which of course on the guitar is not what it is. Uh, D, if you imagine D like this, with the F sharp in the bass, so that would be D zero zero. I'm sorry. There we go. D on mandolin is this. Yeah, I, it may be me. It may be, it may not be the internet issues, the buffering thing may be my fault I'm on, on my end. Although when I checked, it was over six megabytes per second, which is more than I need. Um, yeah, that's funny. That is weird, Kathy. So it was about 40 seconds lag on that. I mean, you guys know the lag because you're seeing me react, although I'm so far behind on the lag. Now I'm up, caught up, I think. Did I miss any questions? I apologize if I did. So like a C chord, you play like this, but you you know that this note is technically part of, could be, that E is in the C chord, but you just don't want to, that's a C over E. So that would be this. But on mandolin, C chord is like that. Uh, dun, 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 dun. That's mandolin. So it's cool, you know, in some ways when you start to realize things like that, that that um, there's some continuity with mandolin and guitar. Um, but with ukulele, it's even more so. Um, let's see. 40 seconds behind on everything else. Yeah, yeah. I hope you're not 40 seconds behind on the live. That would be bad. No, Diane, it's not you, I don't think. Oh, maybe it's me. Oh, okay. Hook logged out and logged back in, and he's in sync. If you slide your time slider on the screen to the right, uh, Bob, what are you saying? If you slide the time slider on the screen to the right, it catches up. Uh, I don't have anything like that. Not that I see. Um, anyway, don't don't forget the thumbs up if you if you haven't yet. Your brain is fo focused on it. Well, I actually heard that chocolate helps fight the coronavirus. Um, yeah, I was the one who said it, but I heard it. Um, I also said today on my Facebook, I posted, <laughs> I said, uh, streaking and streaking in 2020, 2020 is running through a grocery store without your face mask on. <laughs> and I, so far I'm coining this decade, the boring twenties. <laughs> Hey, my lips match my words. I love that when you can do the uh, kind of way you can do the uh, like a Godzilla movie kind of thing. I can't do that. Some people can do that. Hey, it's everybody's back. Everybody's back in sync. Well, it is good. To, as long as it's not having buffering problems, we're. <laughs> I'm not fooling any of you, am I? All right. So really didn't get anything done today, okay? I knew that might be the case. Tomorrow I'm gonna do, a, if I'll log on for a little bit tomorrow, mm -hmm. but I've got to, we, we're gonna film two, two service, 
uh, two weekends of services tomorrow um, afternoon. Um, and so we, we do this thing where we film and we keep the stage to like 10 people. So we don't have more than 10 people on stage. We are all six feet apart from each other. Um, everything's set up that way. We even, when we get there, the whole time we're there, we're, we stay six feet apart. Although I'll probably give my son, Alex, a big hug just to rub everyone's face in it. Cause Alex is always around. So, <laughs> um, the, yeah, the streak from Ray Stevens and they call it the streak. Oh man. <laughs> Beppe. So Beppe, you're having problems in Italy too. Yeah. If, if everyone's having problems, it's on my end. It's not your problem. It's my problem. Um, <laughs> Diane liked my fake. <laughs> we, oh, you guys can hear the birds. <laughs> yeah. Dang it. <laughs> I tried the buffering and it was like, like I could do that here. It's like, oh, I'm having buffering problems. <laughs> uh, not fooling anyone, you know. <laughs> Bring out your dead. A little Monty Python reference. That might be a sip. I'm going to do give the Monty Python reference an honorary sip. And since they're across the pond, I'll give them a water sip. Story time. <laughs> mm. Story Tom. Story time. Let's see. What can I tell? Story. Ah, I know it's just. Mm. Let's see. What do I? I don't. I'm running out of. I don't know if I'm running out of stories or if it's just nothing's. Yeah, I would never win a staring contest. No, you're right, Verdi. I would never. Yeah, I fart in your general direction. So funny the way they portray the French in that movie. Oh my gosh, they <laughs> just slam the French. <laughs> we watched it the other day. We what we uh it's on uh let's see, I think it's it's on Prime. And we watched it the other day, and I laughed out loud so many times. I mean, I know that movie pretty much memorized, and then you watch it and you're like, I don't remember this scene. It's so funny because it had been a long time. Oh, John asked a question. What song is the most difficult to play? I don't know. <laughs> it, any song I stopped learning is pretty much probably there. I can think of 8,000 songs that I tried to learn and I just went, nah. There's, I don't think there's a, such a thing as a most difficult song to play because if Frank's, Frank Zappa can do what he did, uh, um, there, I just don't think there's, you know, you can't really quantify it. You can't really quantify it. Uh, the easiest song could be difficult to play for some people. And uh, so what's my favorite song? I, I've i said it before. I'm pretty sure it's probably Yesterday by the Beatles. It probably had one of the biggest impacts on me. It was the first song I ever performed live with a group. Um, I was seven years old and I had I, I made a vocal group and we sang it at a, a talent show. Um, so, yeah, sorry, John. I know that's a it's not a, the answer you wanted, but every guitar, I mean, I could think of, a million songs that are difficult to play. But as far as which one's the most, it's like saying who's the best guitar player in the world. But, you know, I can tell you pretty much that as much as I hate to admit it, that probably, probably Tom Brady's the greatest quarterback of all time. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, the beat it solo is not, not easy. <laughs> John P. <laughs> well, may, now John P may be a friend of mine. <laughs> Because we used to, my band used to joke to joke about it that I couldn't play that. They used to make fun of me. You can't play the beat it solo, uh, but that's not his heart. He's got harder. Eddie's got harder solos than that one. But uh, but yeah, that I've never I never was able to get it down. I was never able to really get the Eddie Van Halen thing nailed. And to be honest, I as kind of, kind of at the time that Eddie showed up, I was really a jazz snob, and so I kind of thought all the stuff that he was doing was just kind of like parlor tricks. It was, you know, and I, I didn't think personally that it would last. And of course I was wrong as I usually am. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. Of, okay. I got a story. I got a good story. All right. I think Kathy, I think you'll like this story uh, because there's a friend's connection in here. There's a French friend, French connection. No, it's a friend's, the TV show friends. 
So my dad needed surgery and he was living in Gulfport and he had to go to um, Alabama. Where was it in Alabama? Birmingham, Alabama to get the surgery. And so he asked me to fly to Birmingham and then drive him home because he couldn't drive back to Gulfport. So I said, sure. So I flew to Birmingham, hung out with him at the hospital. And then, and boy, I'll tell you, I've never been in such a worse rainstorm, though, walking around in Birmingham. It's just poor. Um, and so um, I um, take my dad home. And I, I stay with him a couple of days, make sure he's OK. And then I fly from Gulfport. I think probably I was probably on Delta Airlines. So because I flew through De Atlanta and I had like a two hour layover in Atlanta and I had brought my. Um, I had brought my Strat, I think, with me to have something to do. So I had my Strat and um, I'm sitting in the airport just practicing. And this guy that was like scruffy, like unshaven wearing a baseball hat kind of and he and he's kind of dressed in you know like jeans and a t-shirt flip-flops <laughs> and I see him coming towards me and I kind of I hook my bag like my foot through the the strap of my bag so the kid grabs it can't run away with it and this was was this post 9-11 it might have been just post 9 yeah it would have probably been post 9-11 or maybe not I can't remember I have to I have to think about it um, so he sits down to me and starts, sits, sits down next to me and starts talking and said, Oh, you know, how long have you played guitar? And I said, Oh, you know, I told him and I, and so we started talking. I, I said, you know, one of the first questions I asked, you know, well, um, well, I said, where are you from? Cause he had a Southern accent and I, he said, Hollywood. And I said, Hollywood, where were you raised? And he goes, <laughs> cause the flight was going to LA. He goes, LA. And I went, well, you've got a Southern accent. And he goes, Oh, I've been working in South Carolina for the last six months. And I went, oh, OK, what do you do? And he goes, uh, I'm an actor. And I said, have you been in anything I'd know? And he said, no, no. I said, well, what, what's your name? And it was, I don't know, Leonardo something. And um, I'm like, so I'm just sitting there. No, it wasn't Leonardo. It was, it was like some Italian name. And so I'm sitting. I'm playing and we're talking about guitars and he's like, Oh yeah. And he says, Oh yeah, I have, a, I have a couple of Paul Reed Smiths. And, um, and, uh, I said, Oh, okay, that's cool. And he goes, yeah, one of them, a director gave me it. And now I'm like going, well, that's kind of weird. Cause Paul Reed Smiths aren't cheap. Um, so I'm like, okay, well, you know, he must be, but I didn't recognize his name and I didn't recognize him, but I'm horrible with faces, horrible with faces. So we're, we're, uh, <laughs> We're, we're getting ready. You know, they're starting to get ready to board. And I think it's a, a, a red eye, if I'm not mistaken. Like, it's a, a late flight. And he goes, do you know if there's going to be food on the plane? And I said, I don't think so. And there's a McDonald's. He starts to go over the McDonald's. Well, I'm just gonna and we were talking for like an hour and a half. Like, literally just hanging out the whole time. Talking. We were talking about my kids and my church. And he was talking about, uh, we were talking about guitar and stuff like that. And <laughs> I clearly, I did all the talking because I didn't learn anything about him. And so we, uh, he goes, starts going to McDonald's and I, and he goes, oh no, before he heads over to McDonald's, he says, what about in first class? And I went, well, I don't know. And so he starts walking over to McDonald's and I go, well, shoot, let me ask him. And I pack up my guitar and I go up to the gate and I said, Hey, do you have food in first class? Said, oh yeah, we got whatever you want in first class. Okay. I said, okay, cool. So I go to McDonald's, he's staying in line. I said, Hey, don't worry about it. They got food. They said they'll have whatever you want in, in first class. He goes, Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. That's me. Chatty Tommy. And, uh, so, so I'm like, okay, you know, we finished talking. We say goodbye, have a good flight. He gets on the plane. Then I get on the plane and I sit down next to this, this couple, African-American couple. And um, the guy says to me, do you know who you've been talking to for the last two hours? And I said, no, who? He goes, that was Giovanni Rabisi. And I went, so? He goes, did you see Saving Private Ryan? And I went, yeah. He goes, he was the medic in Saving Private Ryan. And I went, Saving pre oh oh really he goes yeah that's Phoebe's little brother and friends it was Giovanni Rabisi <laughs> not Leonardo DiCaprio no I just do that to to make people go oh, you were talking to Leonardo because <laughs> that's the more reaction 
this, but it was it was Giovanni Ribisi. And he starts naming all these movies. And then the wife of the guy that was telling me all this, she says to me, do you know who he is? Pointing at the guy next to me. And I'm like, no, who are you? And it was some guy from ESPN, like one of the the talking heads from ESPN, but I don't, I didn't have cable at the time. So I like, I, I pled ignorance on that, which I plead all the time. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was funny. So I, I was like, Oh my gosh. And the guy was like, what? He said, I just, he told me he was an actor and I just, because I didn't recognize him or didn't recognize his name. I just assumed he was a struggling actor. Like every other actor I know and he goes. So, and I said, well, I told him, I tried to encourage him. I said, stick with it, man, because you're, you could get like on a CSI in your forties or fifties, you know, my days of being in Nirvana are long behind me and the next Nirvana are long behind me. And I, <laughs> so I just was like, and then I said, Oh shoot. He asked if he could take guitar lessons. And I thought he was kind of a bum. And I thought, yeah, no, I told him no. So it was so funny. And then afterwards I said, I saw him later, like I worked on a movie with him later and we talked and he totally didn't remember meeting me, of course. And I said, Giovanni, I use you as an example of humility. He laughed and he went, what do you mean? I said, well, when I talk to you know people about what it's like to be, what, what humility is, is when you don't tell people what you do, you know, and I'm always mentioning that, that I played all the guitars on Apex Legend. <laughs> So he didn't say anything. He just was like, oh, yeah, he didn't go, oh, I did this and I did this. And, you know, he didn't list his credits. Of course, you know, I looked him up later on IMDb and went, oh, I'm an idiot. I should have known him. But anyway. Yeah, Kathy, you would have known right away. But he did. He was like all scruffy and he I don't know. He got a hat on, you know, it was like but Beth would have known right away. too, Because, you know, that's Giovanni Ribisi. So um, he is pretty funny. And he was in this movie, the Gangster Squad movie that I worked on. And like I said, I sat on, I was like sitting with him at a, a, a meal and I started talking to him. He thought it was hilarious that I used him as an example of humility because he didn't brag about his credits. <laughs> um, but, and I found out he's a Scientologist. Uh, so he's into Scientology. And so that was funny because we talked a lot about my church. He was really curious about my church at the time when we talked the first time. So anyway, so let's see. We Everybody was listening though. Now that I'm done with my story, everybody's chiming in here. Let's see. Uh, Bob, shoot me. What did you say? Is that Delta's? No, Delta's in Atlanta. United's hubs are, gosh, they got a bunch of them. United is uh, Houston, Washington, D.C., Denver, Chicago, and then Newark. I think those are their hubs. American is like Miami, St. Louis. Delta Atlanta is Delta and then Minneapolis and Detroit, I think is a Delta hub because they bought Northwest. Um, Southwest is Dallas. I think Yeah, Dallas hub is Southwest has. Yeah. I think Vegas is a hub for Dallas or Southwest too. Yeah. Kathy, you would have known it was him right away. Yeah. Right. Okay. Sorry. I see that now, David. Yeah, exactly. Um, JetBlue is New York City. Yep. And I JetBlue is great because they fly out of uh they fly in LA, they fly out of um what's that airport? A Long Beach, which is like the Hooterville Airport. It's like Petticoat Junction. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh yeah, he was in stealth mode. No, Kathy would know. She would know. I, Beth wouldn't. Like I said, is he that was the movie he was filming, Gone in 60 Seconds. That's the one he had just finished filming that he was on his way home from. Uh, so, cause I figured that out because I looked it up, you know, later and was like, okay, that was when he had finished filming that. Cause that was filmed in the South somewhere. Jim Anderson, um, name sounds familiar. Bob's asking me if I've ever, do I know or ever worked with the sound engineer, Jim Anderson, is he a live mixer or studio? And Pat Pepper has a question. Is the Spice Club on La Brea in Hollywood. I've never heard of the Spice Club. Um, I, I've been over in La Brea a million times because that's where a Henson Studios is. Uh, Jim Henson Muppets headquarters, Jim Henson headquarters is on La Brea. It's the same. They, they bought a &M Studios from Herb Alpert. And so that's there. And that's where Bieber re mostly records. And funny, because when I was recording with Bieber, 
in one room, uh, this was a few years ago, uh, Rush was in the other room recording. Getty Lee was in there. They were recording in the other room. So, and everybody was talking about them, but I didn't see them. Um, airport in Bozeman, Montana only has four gates. Yeah, the airport in Joplin, Missouri has one. <laughs> when I go, I went to Joplin, we, it was one gate. Yeah, pretty much any movie with, yeah, any movie that has Cage in it would be better if he wasn't in it. I don't know, something about him I kind of like, but I don't know why. He was crazy, though. You read about his bankruptcies and all the stuff he bought. Yeah, Rush is great. Christina, Christine chimes in when I mention Rush. Hi, Christine. <laughs> so, sip for mentioning Bieber. No, can't do that. <laughs> Just Apex Legend. But I'm taking a sip anyway. Uh, Bodrum, Turkey. One gate, no building. Hilarious. Well, I love, I love in at Burbank Airport, they make you get out on the, you actually have a staircase and get walk on the tarmac, which I love. Because whenever I leave the plane, I always tell people they got to stand at the top and wave their hands like they're either the Beatles in New York or any president, basically. Because when do you get to do that? You know, usually you're on a jetway. So I love, I love that when you're. Canadian and you're Lightfoot, Lightfoot too? Or did you mention oh, Gordon Lightfoot earlier? Maybe you did. I know, Dennis, uh, 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 Nicholas Cage. A lot of actors, you kind of get the impression that they're just being themselves <laughs> because they're the same character in every movie. So, yeah, I did say I, but I was, when I was telling my story, I was, that was to make a point about how humble I'm not. <laughs> With my lack of humility. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Kathy. Dennis, you're just jealous because he, every guy wants to be him in that movie. Oh, I, you know, I don't know if I've seen that movie. Who, 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 who is his female lead in that movie? Okay, I'm looking it up now. You got me curious. I forget. I never saw it. So I've got IMD here. IMDB here. <laughs> I could post my credits. I have my credits here if you want to see those. Uh, let's see. Uh, gone in 60 seconds. Two thousand. Yeah, so this was pre-9-11, so that makes sense. That's why I was maybe worried about... Oh, Angelina Jolie, of course, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I have actually, um, uh, uh, I, I actually saw, I had a friend that played guitar with Billy Bob Thornton because Billy Bob Thornton is a singer also, singer songwriter. So he was doing shows and I remember seeing him play and he had that vial of, Angelina's Jolie's blood on his on a chain around his neck. Remember when they did that? I don't know what that was all about, but that was interesting. I'm trying to think, do I have a well, my daughter um met uh not only met but hung out with <laughs> with Brad Pitt. My daughter got to kind of hang out with Brad Pitt. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> Emma, how old was she? She was she 13? <laughs> this sounds really sketchy. <laughs> oh, man. It's pretty funny. You, face off was, yeah, face off was kind of, kind of fun. Yeah. And I, I don't, I, I don't mind the, uh, the, the, uh, you know, the, the museum ones, not, not to be, uh, the, uh, the, Declaration of Independent ones. What are those ones uh, that, that, Nicholas Cage. Those are kind of fun. I mean, they're, they're just, you know, they're, they're humorous at times. And um, yeah, my family just hangs with celebrities all the time. Um, well, <laughs> I was, I don't know if Cruz, are you here? I don't know if Cruz is here, but I was teaching Cruz Beckham yesterday and, and I'm teaching him. We're doing a live stream. And then Victoria shows up behind him and says, hi, Tom. And then David Beckham comes up and says, hi, Tom. 
because <laughs> they know me because I've been Cruz's guitar teacher now for about two or three years. It was pretty funny that they they had to kind of <laughs> come into the room. National Treasure. Yeah, those are pretty fun movies. Um, so, uh, um, but yeah, no, Emma, uh, my daughter Emma was is her best friend at, uh, for much of her growing up years was a, an actress girl that played Brad Pitt's daughter in World War, World War Z. And two of the girl's sisters were going to London to hang out because um, she was gone for months filming this and her dad was with her and everything. Um, and so Emma asked if she could go with him. So I said, sure. So we, we flew Emma when she was 12 years old to London with uh, the her friend's uh, um, sisters. And then it turned into like three weeks or something. Like she was there for three weeks and I thought Emma would be homesick and we Skyped with her. And, you know, every time she's like, oh, hey, good see mom, dad. Okay, I'm going to go. You know? And they were staying in a really nice hotel in London. And, uh, and so when she met Brad, Brad was like, okay, now who are you and why are you friends with, um, oh, what was her, Abigail? And because Abigail was playing, was one of the two kids playing uh, Brad Pitt's daughters in World War Z. So they, they filmed, yes, yeah, J uh, J uh, Phoebe's little brother on Friends, that's right, Giovanni, which I didn't recognize him. And this would have been 1999. He, I, I'd seen those episodes. Um, but anyway, so that was... So Emma was like on set and stuff, you know, basically every day when she was there and uh, she loved it. She had a blast and she got to see, I mean, they didn't do a whole lot of tourist stuff because they just had, didn't have time. Um, but um, she got to see some of the filming and, and like I said, she met, and actually she um, babysat for the uh, Murray. Um, there, so the lady that played Brad Pitt's wife in it had a kid. And I think Emma played with the kid, like just to entertain the kid or something like that. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. It's part of it's just living in LA and part of it's being in our business. But just if, if I was in any business here in LA, Emma was friends with uh, Abigail and that would have happened anyway. A Emma's not starstruck at all. She was just like, you know, uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I think that's why they liked her. So, and that's what Brad was checking out, making sure that Emma wasn't just Abigail's friend because of, uh, she was a movie star, and she, unfortunately, not, Abigail's now like six two or something, so she's way too tall. I think they're talking about making another movie of it. But so, what happened to the chat? Let me, yo, hasn't updated in a while. I'm gonna sign out, and tomorrow, like I said, I'll probably if I do anything, it'll be an hour. Um, oh, okay, there you are. Okay. I just thought for a second there, I thought the, the chat wasn't, hey, Joseph, you're new. Um, so let me let me sign off and then um, <laughs> yo back at you, Hook. <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny, though. Emma's like she run now she's like all Midwestern girl. She loves being in the Midwest. So she might get a little starstruck now if she met a celebrity. But um, <laughs> you're just that enthralled. I, I don't understand that. I'm totally not, you know, very exciting. <laughs> this story wasn't very good. Okay. Anyway, let's uh, pick up tomorrow. Okay. I'll check my email. email. Uh, thank you, East End, or David. Um, your turn to freeze. Exactly. You guys are buff. That was a pretty good buffer. You have to admit that, David. I, you're, I, you have to admit that I held. <laughs> yes, exactly. You talk during the lessons. You listen during story time. That Jim, you got it. And so, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, and I'll shine in for you know. Maybe I'll do ten minutes. Maybe I'll do thirty minutes or sixty minutes. But I can't go past an hour. I don't want to get too tired. Last time I got too tired and got sick, and everybody freaked out because they thought I had the coronavirus and they were all going to die. And I'm like, no, no, I'm just not, I'm just exhausted. And so, um, so tomorrow I have to have all my energy. I don't know how long it's going to take to do two services. It's only three songs per service. So it shouldn't take long, but last time they, when I got tired, it was, we did three songs, but we had to do, we rehearsed them and then we recorded them and then we recorded them again. So we ended up doing the service like three times in a row. It took like two hours and change. And I'd been on my feet all the time and I was already kind of feeling really tired before I start. So tomorrow I have to make sure I get protein, I get plenty of sleep, 
I don't wear myself out before I get there. And it's never, it's, it's fun being with you. I get energized by this. Uh, but uh, I, cause I really appreciate all of you guys. And I love you all. Um, and I always try to make the last thing I say to anybody is I love you because uh, I've known a couple people that have had to go into the hospital with a, with the COVID thing and nobody was allowed to be with them while I died. So I figured I want to make sure everyone knows <laughs> that I love you guys. So uh, better tell my wife that right now. All right. So we'll see you tomorrow and I'll leave the chat up for a little bit and then we'll, um, I think the, the peak was probably around 45. It's all, I got, got into the forties a few times, so that's better. Uh, tomorrow I'll be short, um, shorter and then we'll, you know, I may try to start something new on Wednesday. We'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of what we, what we want to do. Um, maybe I'll, I'll do, I'll test some of the basic lessons off on you guys that I want to maybe record later. Okay. But then they're up there and then why do them? <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. New stuff. We got, we got to do something new. I don't know what we're going to, maybe I'll do a, str we'll do some strumming. We'll practice strumming groups. I know I did those videos, but at least we can, we can, I can reiterate them and take questions on it. That might come in handy. Um, also, I could do some electric things, strumming groups too, which would be fun. I could do both. All right. Virtual hug to you too, Dennis. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.